Hello everyone, in this video we are going to have a lot of different stories and a lot of different news stories. Keep a critical mind as always. I will always try to put all the evidence and proof out there. If there isn't enough, then also you can search for yourself, but I will try to keep all those things out there for you guys. And as always, keep a critical mind and I hope you enjoy. Gold, the big, 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 he's huge. He's pretty big. And VTubers follow him. VTubers have talked about him. The VTubers have reacted to him. That's why I'm talking to about it here. VTubers, he is not necessarily a part of the VTuber community, but he is big within the VTuber community in the sense that he has people that talk about him. He has quote unquote VTuber children. He is a part of Mythic Talent Agency, Mythic uh, Management Agency, which has a lot of big VTubers. This is why I'm talking about it. He's part of the VTuber community at this point because Mythic Talent has a lot of VTubers. Rima, uh, false other people so what happened he got banned why did he get banned his main twitch account is suspended i think it's for 14 days after his controversial comments about people from palestine who he referred to as terrible people from an inferior culture the rant went viral quickly sparking controversy in the streamer community asmagold has since offered an apology which is the minimum he can do uh but uh many say his fall short of addressing the severity of his comments he's banned from twitch for about 14 days for doing this he says looking back on it it was way too much of an a-hole about the palestine thing my bad of course no one deserves to have their life destroyed even if they do things or have views i find regressive you guys deserve more than me saying dumb stuff like that i'll do better i'm not gonna cry an effing river when people have you know that have uh baked into their laws of getting blank i said I said Asmund Gold as a clip has been shared around social media. I don't give an F. They're terrible people. It's not even a question. It's crazy that people don't see it that way. Asmund Gold then answers a question from from viewer in chat, asking how many people they have blanked. Asmund Gold replies, as many as they can. His rant then continues. These people are, are not your allies. They're not the same as us. They came from an inferior culture that's horrible. It kills people for their identity. And it directly antithetical to everything Western values stand for. Holy crap. And um, yeah, Twitch has not commented on it but he is banned and here's exactly what he said because i like showing exactly what is said here you go consider a genocide as a systematic killing of a group of people they have genocide built into sharia law right now so no i'm not going to cry a fucking river when people who have genocide that's baked into their laws are getting genocided i don't give a fuck they're terrible people oh god it's not even a question oh god it's crazy that people don't see it that way they'd be doing the same thing and he's confident in this and how much did they kill as many as they can. They're not able to kill as many people as Israel because they don't have as many bombs and as many weapons. But if they did, they'd be doing the same thing. Holy crap. That's it. Just takes enough. That's right. These people are not your allies. They are not the same as us. They come from an inferior culture that is horrible. It kills people for their identity and it is directly antithetical to everything Western values stand for. And it is an inferior culture in all ways. It is that simple. No, I don't feel bad for them. I don't feel sorry for them. I don't care. I don't support them. This is, oh my goodness. Number one, stepping into politics. As I have always said, in, in, in geopolitical stuff is what this is. Geopolitical stuff. It shouldn't be politics. It should just say hurting any civilians is bad. No matter what side you're on, hurting any civilians is bad. Just have it that way. And any group of leadership, any leadership that goes and hurts other people just for who they are and what they are is horrible not naming any names not saying any people not saying any country specifically any group that is in charge any leadership any you know party or whatever that is in charge that goes and is their their whole mantra is to hurt the innocent just because they are of another group ethnically or otherwise is horrible anybody who does that is horrible anybody who defends that is horrible anybody who has any kind of beliefs that yeah they deserve to have that because they have these beliefs and that beliefs is horrible that's as far as i'll go into it i won't be one side or the other i'm just gonna say anybody who does that is horrible just in my mind there is no justification that you can put out there and what he said deserved a ban i honestly think he should he deserved a permanent ban but then again that's just me because you don't go and say this on having a group as big as you do, having a channel as big as you are, having a following as big as you are. Yes, you are not responsible for what your followers believe. You are responsible for what you say. And if you said something wrong, which you did, you should be responsible for it, which I'm glad he got banned for that. He got banned for a short time, which was a slap on the wrist, which is normal for Twitch and large creators. That is a normal thing. And I do not agree that it was as short as it was. It should have been at least 30 days based on what he said, because it was a very, 
You would have said that about any like white supremacist or anything like that. You would have wanted them to be gone, period, from from the platform. So that's the issue. That's the issue that I have. You don't go and do this with a channel as big as yours. You don't go and do this with a following as big as yours. This is an opinion piece, or it seems like more like an opinion piece from what I am seeing here, an opinion of somebody who is on the Kurosanti subreddit. I wish the Santi ID members, the ones remaining, get better life. Uh, it's like, am I the only one that feels that they want to do that? Am I the only one that's hoping a couple on the XD Santi ID make it to Hollow Life ID? So I mean, their Gen 4 is coming up. Like, honestly, I wish they had a strong indie now, or they get better into Corpos, those who left, those still need Santi. Sanji ID, feel bad, man. They're just chilling, but never their day to shine. The ID boys and gals don't deserve this. I love Narang, by the way. She is one of my favorite Nidhi Sanji ID members, along with Mika. She's one of my favorites, too. Uh, am I the only one that feels that? No. Niji ID is their biggest failure so far. If EN fails and continues failing the way it is right now, uh, EN is going to be their biggest failure, period. Like, overall. And it's going to be a humongous failure for them like i don't think there's been an agency that's failed as bad as that in their english market like english market has been print printing money for hollow live id i mean hollow live in general should uh hear the stories of the good old days when niji spoke fondly of their managers who generally love vtubing and everything they represented for real until that merge happened id was super strong enjoyed watching many of them they sound like they were having a great time now look at what happened said to disagree id was their first real failure they entered id market so early in the vtubing timeline and they fumbled the bag so darn hard and that's the way i feel I feel that's a big thing. They fumbled the bag really hard, and they're doing that with EN right now. A lot of Southeast Asia countries are huge weebs. They promoted them more from the start. They could have had a tighter leash on potential fans. If not for VTuber talents and the ID staff, they wouldn't have had been a successful ID at all. Then EG ruined it with the merger. I guess market enthusiasm does not equal profit. They were not satisfied with the low growth of the ID market and cut local staff to cut costs. To be fair, it is true that the numbers were never good, but here's the thing that I always have to say. When it comes to those numbers, look at Hollow Live ID. Hollow Live ID doesn't have anywhere near the numbers that Nidhi Sanji ID had, but they know they're cultivating their fan base. They're going for the long game. They're not wait. They're not having things be slow. It's, it's slow growth. They don't want things immediate. Like I, Nidhi Sanji wants everything right now. They don't want to wait a, a year down the line to see the, the growth. They want it now in this moment. That's why they kept EN the way it was because Luxium grew in the moment. Now it's faltering, but it grew in the moment. So ID didn't get that support like what happened with Hololive. Hololive ID, you have several generations now. Their first generation took a bit. It took a bit. It took like a good six months to a year to grow. And, but now look at it. Now it's insane. Risu and all of them, they're just doing an amazingly good job. And that is what you have to do in order to run a business. You're going to do a lot of costs in the beginning and get some benefits in the end. And that's the thing. It was a tragedy. And so that other, other people are here saying, I'm not going to read all of them, of course, because I'm doing more chatting in this one. Um, but I do want, I wanted them to succeed. I want every VTuber to succeed. That's why I do VTuber showcases myself, because I want every VTuber, large and small, to succeed. The small ones, I'm trying to put them out there because they're drowned in the sea of everything else. So that's why I do what I do. Because I want to see them succeed. And yeah, the, the, the dividends don't come right away, but they come eventually. This is newsworthy. Not for the reason that you think. Not as like, you know, beat, beating up on past Didi Sanji people or too much drama or whatever. But someone actually made rules now. The person that we knew had no rules for their kindred, or not the kindred, their uh, siklings. Their siklings, Hex Haywire siblings uh they had no rules before at least no strict rules before now he has strict rules so i guess kirio who is who used to be hex haywire is trying to fix things kirio may be setting some clear boundaries at the sickling fiasco there are rules he has not in place it's it's a source is right here of course we're going to look at the source here and this is the summary of so the absolutely. rules basically the rules that he's going to be setting over here these are the new rules the summary of rules are subject to change. This is the one that he has in his YouTube description. One, absolutely no racism or any kind of phobias, any kind of discrimination at all, bullying or hate speech, or even politics. These will never be condoned. It includes drama. Anyone who brings drama from wherever, personal or beef with other content creator, not the place for it. Do not trauma dump or provide too much information about your personal life. It's for the maintenance of your security, mine, and the atmosphere of the stream. Doesn't need to know uh, the very deep details of your personal life, streaming to hundreds to thousands of viewers at a time so it's important to be careful uh keep your updates like how your day is short uh he doesn't need long-winded explanations makes sense please don't ask me deeply personal questions he knows when to set boundaries so don't baby him police or moderate in chat and what he can and cannot be asked 
If the question is too personal, he won't read it. Mods will be watching. So he has mods now too. And mods will be watching and probably delete it. Uh, you can ask about his day, what he's been listening to, how cats are, etc. You will be ignored and timed out for asking deeply personal questions. No bullying. Bannable offense. Can be timed out depending on severity. No doxing. Outside of stream is a personal matter. He, can, he can't control what happens on... He can only control what happens on stream. Can't control what happens off stream. No Discord for a while, but we'll create, create a Discord when he has the right moderation team. No sub bullying on chat, e.g. no snarky comments. No excessive swearing or vulgar remarks, of course. You can you can change, like, say, fook, that, you know, foo, that type of thing, but no overly just say curse, 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 curse. No self-promotion, you will get timed out and receive a warning. My streams are intended for mature audiences, viewer discretion is advised. Point blank, no minors allowed, you will be banned. Streams are in 18 plus space. This includes future Discord server. This is for his server, of course. He's not an 18 plus streamer, but he feels more comfortable and he feels uncomfortable when minors are watching. He feels more comfortable with, you know, people over the age of 18, which makes sense. He says, I am not your boyfriend, best friend therapist. He's here to provide entertainment because he's streaming. And it says, of course, Kara says, please refer to the Twitch page for the rules. In any case, he also adds some more. Also mentioned, he'll be posting right up here regarding the rules, like he said. He stands firm in his rules and they will be there to stay. Rules are non-negotiable. So finally, he made some rules. And this is newsworthy because this is a man who didn't have rules back when he was Hex Haywire. Or at least he didn't put any rules out there. Now what's being said here, I say give him around, around two to six months max to see if he sticks to it. If he does, good for him that he learned. If not, then I don't know that I don't even know anymore. It's good that he's trying to set boundaries. If he actually sticks to them, he'll be much better off not having to worry about any more unhinged fans. Part of me is wondering if he didn't care about those fans because he knew he was on his way out. Only thing that has changed is PLs are more noticeable now, so I don't think he will get a clean break from his corporal past. Of course, people like myself and others will hold him responsible for anything he does, of course. But if he is actually changing, I do believe in second chances. If he actually changes and actually shows that he is not deeply super parasocial and wanting to, to, to create a large parasocial fan base, himself by doing you know asmrs or doing things boyfriend experience that type of stuff like he can do asmrs but not boyfriend experience asmrs not like really close intimate asmrs that type of stuff if he does that then of course the second chance is allowed is it should be allowed i covered previously how toa was a part of an anime at least a little bit of an anime here and there and uh in a, i think it was mao 2099 demon lord 2099 it's a good anime, it's, it's already out, and right now, we're going to be talking about something that Shirakami Fubuki and Natsui, Natsuhiro Matsuri is in an anime, Detective is already dead, question mark. And there you go, that's a little part, not going to play too much of it, because of course, the way uh, things work in society is I can get screwed over by copyright if I do too much. So here we are. It says there was also a time where Korone appeared as a short cameo in Yokai Watch. Uh, World's Finest Assassin was voiced by Nene. Uh, a character was voiced in it there. There's Korone right there. We, we know because of this here, her her, dot, her ponytails, her pigtails, whatever you want to call them, they were all there, her braids. It's just, it's distinctly Korone and the voice was Korone as well. All these other ones, well, on the anime, uh, Fubuki voiced the acting role at Kamen Rider movie. Fubuki, Flair, and Noel and Yago appeared in a special episode for the anime of Rebirth. For you, card game to promote the Hololive theme set. Even if it is an anime, Fubuki, Poka, and Noel voiced bosses for the Little Witch Noberta game. So, yeah, they voiced bosses here. They all did for the Little Witch Noberta game. This one. I see, I saw a lot of people play it, but they also wished, you know, they, they also voiced people here. Poka and Oga also voiced characters. For the fourth season of, of Do, Do Gengers, Oga and Poka voice Tokatsu character too. Here you had a uh, screenshot from the season of How Not to Summon a Demon Lord. Uh, had like a Pekoda appearing bunny there. Uh, there was the informal Isekai Pekoda was an Easter egg in anime during 21 or 2022. For the Blu-ray, it was removed, unfortunately. Probably because it appeared too much like Pekoda. And Hololive was like, can you please, you can, it's fine on anime. But can you please remove this at some point? probably after the anime appeared you can't really remove it but in the um in the blu-ray it was removed so i mean nobody asserted toa was the first the most expressed surprise she appeared in such a manner it's just toa hasn't appeared in anything like that it's just that's what it is toa never as far as i know didn't appear in anything like that so it's not necessarily the first but um it's nice to see that hololive decides to put people in animes because guess what that also promotes your talents 
to a, a fan base that is very, very, very cross-platform with you. Basically, it, cr it crisscrosses with you. Anime and VTubing is absolutely intertwined. So that's why they do. And it's very great that they do. Ami Ami English is the English account for Ami Ami, which is the largest online figure hobby store in Japan. So they do, you know, figures, other collaborations, things like that. The amiibo type of thing, you know, they, they do. Look at these. They, really, really nice stuff. Really nice stuff like this. So why am I talking about Ami Ami today? Well, they say October 14th is Sports Day in Japan. Otsukare sama des. Ina Senpai. Amiko streams of deepening her friendship with Ina san. Amiko is the mascot for Ami Ami. Nino my Ina niece through sports. Ina Arts. Kawaii. Of course, wa. Thanks for including us. Tacos in there. Of course, the tacos are down there. The tacos are included. Is that that's a baby bottle? Is that, is that a baby bottle for tacos? Or is that just uh, them? No, I think it's a baby bottle. Or them drinking. Uh, then you also have, again, let's go Ina Senpai. Ina san is very peaceful. Indoorsy type of girl, but in Amiko's dream, she's burning with fighting spirit. And there's Amiko, you know, cheering a Taco Dachi in the back, cheering a Taco Dachi batter. They're all ready. They're all ready to go. They're all just ready and raring to go. I love seeing these things because this is very fun. It's very fun to see this. It's very fun to have collabs like this. And as we know, recently, Ina, because of a visa issue, has not been able to uh, stream as much as she would like. And uh, pretty much, I think right now, because of that VC issue, she can't stream. So at the very least, she's getting things like this. She's able to do little collabs like this still because of contract negotiations and stuff like that. Mika Neko, who's unfortunately being seen as a lol cow at this moment because of all the mistakes that she's made. I can empathize with all the stuff that's happening in the sense of it's hard living with mental illness and having people attack you the way that she's been attacked. I'm someone who deals with mental illness every single day. I have depression, anxiety, and a bunch of other stuff that I deal with. It is not a, a thing that I use to excuse my behavior. Just like I say, Mika Neko's behavior is not excusable because of mental illness. You need to get that stuff dealt with and you need to get it dealt with properly in order for you not to affect people around you. But I can understand the extreme reactions that can be had when you have extreme anxiety like I do or extreme depression like I do and probably she does as well. There can be extreme reactions to it. I, I don't say this like I say to excuse anything, just kind of to give you an idea of what's happening behind the scenes. Here we go. She's saying right here, she has all her stuff in Japanese and she actually did a deep L one, which I guess she's understanding that there's a lot of English speakers that are talking about this. I'm very sorry for the trouble I've caused you. Please allow me to write my feelings since the other party statement has created a lot of speculation and flames. People started flaming her for it. First of all, it was the court that proposed the settlement. Not only the other party, but the court also informed me at the same time. Finally, I propose specific details from our side. No involvement with each other, no sabotage of activities, etc. The settlement was reached in the court's initiative. I did not unilaterally demand a settlement. Therefore, I want you to know that one side did not give up, but both sides agreed to the settlement. So there's not one side or the other side giving up. It's not her side that gave up. It's not Mafu Mafu's side that gave up. It's just both sides were like, you know what? It's best not to continue this, which is smart on both sides, to be honest with you. I said it before. As for my statement, I have written that I did not have an affair because I was slandered daily on the internet by the other party's words and actions on the distributor's delivery. My statement was pre-checked by the court and the other party and was incorporated into the settlement. I would not have settled if I had not been able to post that one. Also, the court was only neutral and did not make a decision in favor of one side or the other, at least. The court people considered the future of both of us and came up with a mutually acceptable settlement, which is good. It's good that they both understood that and they both went for it. They also told me to value my time. Even if I don't agree with the terms of the settlement, I always want to move forward with my future in mind. Even if I'm not satisfied with the terms of the settlement, even if I'm not satisfied with my future, as long as the terms of the settlement are met, that I will not be involved in any way in the future and that I will it will not interfere with my work or activities, I'll be fine with that. I was diagnosed with PTSD in May 2023 and I was wrecked both physically and mentally. For this reason, I agreed to the settlement, hoping that it will convey in my statement that I did not do what I did not do, despite what many claims made against me at trial. The trial was very painful because very many things I did not want to remember. The emotional scars, both sides had emotional scars. I'm just being honest here, objective. Yes, she's saying her side, but remember both sides had emotional scarring. Both sides had emotional things they had to deal with. So I am empathetic with both sides. Getting deeper and deeper and I could not laugh well during the live broadcast. And the criminal charges against both of us were ongoing and about to conclude at the end of September. Criminal with it being, you know, uh, slander. I think slander is more, more of a criminal thing or something like that. I don't know. Um, it's different in Japan. Criminal code versus uh, civil code. Whatever decision was reached, it was determined to do my best. The future, strong sense of remorse. Just before the trial, however, my statement, which had been initially been rejected by the party, was accepted. 
and we easily reached a settlement. So at the end, you know, Mafu Mafu gave in with some things and was like, okay, you can say your statement. In the settlement, I issued a statement and we talked about both parties settling, whereas I had the other party and the court check my contents of my statement in advance because I did not want any further trouble. I was very surprised to see that the other party had issued a statement without checking with me or the court. So Mafu Mafu just sent a statement without having it be checked, even though uh, she was doing the kindness of actually getting it checked because she didn't want Mafu Mafu to say, oh, you did this without my permission, blah, 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 blah. You know, that kind of stuff. Reason why I issued the statement again is because I asked the other party to correct the statement, but they did not respond to my request. There were some expressions that could not be misunderstood, that could be misunderstood, and I will make sure to correct them. In the end, we reached a settlement and I'm happy for both parties. Hope that each of us can go our own way and be happy in the future. I will not go into further details unless necessary. Thank you for reading. I'm not very good at getting around. I'm not very smart, so I always check my lawyer before sending out my messages, so I apologize for stiffness of my message. Uh, I always make mistakes because I'm not worthy, I'm not wordy, and I am clumsy. From now on, I will make an effort to take a break before sending something. I'm truly sorry for causing you concern. I'm not a perfect person, but I will continue to make efforts in my own way. Thank you very much for reading this. So at least she accepts that there were mistakes made. There accepts that she's not she's not a perfect person. She accepted that things um didn't go the way that you know she wanted originally. She at least went through the extra effort of getting things checked out. Went through the extra effort of getting things uh, checked on the case of the, uh, you know, the settlement to make sure everything's done. I don't look at that stuff just like watching your streams. I'm still going to watch. Thank you for your effort and this clarification. I'm going to keep supporting you. Of course, I hope you can move on with your futures. Thank you for the update. We'll continue to support you. This helps. This helps a lot. Thank you for your statement. I hope we can move forward from this and see lots of you from the future. I hope both sides. I hope both sides can move on uh, because both sides were affected. Both sides victimized each other. They both did. They both did some horrible things. They both were aggressive towards each other. They were also both um, kind of toxic towards each other. Either one caused the other or anything like that. Doesn't matter. They were both toxic. That's what matters. They were both toxic. There were no innocents here, even though some people tried to make one side more innocent than the other. They were both bad to each other. And that's the way I'll, I'll always see it. And that means that both Mika and Neko and Mafu Mafu made a lot of mistakes. Team Comfy VT, if you remember the VMuse thing, the big concert venue that I had been uh, mentioning many, many times before, now has um, finished. It is done. It has been completed. Thank you everyone who joined VMuse. We're incredibly grateful for your overwhelming support. While we experience some live stream issues, we'll work to resolve them over the next week. For now, have a safe trip home and we hope everyone has a comfy time. And of course, here's Bow the Whale. Here is uh, Iron Mouse doing her singing portion. Here is, of course, Made Mint with, with, with KLP48 in front. So you see here, you may not be able to see it very well because you see Made Mint. KLP48 was in front live. And then you had Made Mint doing it back there. And this is one of her big wishes that she desired to have, if I remember correctly. This is one of the huge wishes that she had. This is like a dream come true for her to be able to be, because I think she's a fan of KLP48 from what I've heard. And it is a big thing for a lot of people. There were indies in there and everything like that. There were people there that were from different agencies, indies in the, in the Southeast Asia area, uh, people from agencies in the Southeast Asia area. There's Kena and Kudo there. And everyone was like, great event vibes. Definitely things you can guys work, you guys can work on, like the side screens, only showing the middle person on both sides and pre-planning for ticket bonuses, etc. Also, mid-event intermissions for the night concert leads to some to believe that the event was over when it wasn't. So yeah, they should have actually they should fix some little things like that about you know intermissions. Because if if it's not over, you don't want to leave when it's not over. And here is a song they had. So yeah, they, they had that. So they had their own little song there. There It says, let's sing our song featuring Iron Mouse, Mint Phantom, K9 Kuro, and Bao VTuber, official AMV, official animated music video. And here you have, you know, all the animated music video stuff all there. They did a really good job with this one, actually. I like it. It's simple, simple, but um, the sound effects and the, the different visual effects, the visual effects, that's what I mean, different visual effects of it and unique um, styling of the actual art makes it look nice, makes it nice, makes it very nice. I'm glad that they were able to do it. And of course, these are the people that brought people to there because they're larger, more well-known around the world type of VTubers. Welcome back everybody to the VTuber Showcase. A little bit of spooky season, spooky month type of new look for me, a little bit for you guys. Getting into the whole thing of it 
a little bit of a change. Uh, I always try to give back to the community, push it forward, you know, pay it forward, whatever you want to call it. Give some love to VTubers who deserve it. Every single VTuber does. But I'm only one squirrel, so I can't do everybody out there. I do who I can. Today, we're talking about Megu, the SCP Cat Girl VTuber. Uh, yapping art and variety VTuber. And here is their model. Of course, they have the cover up because of, you know, the uh, Twitch stuff. And they have their full model here. And let's take a look at their Twitch. They said, it's a silly, silly pink Max Cat Girl VTuber. So, my name is Megu, British Cat Girl, artist and casual gamer, just messing about on Twitch and having fun. Mainly stream art, a variety of video games, all while talking to chatters like you. So, let's kick back and relax together. Grab your favorite mug, pour yourself a nice cup of tea. Other beverages are available and enjoy the streams. Business inquiries is megumuvt at gmail.com, of course. And let's take a look at something that they have here. Face, I'm so sorry. I am now obsessed with my face. I'm so sorry, guys. I am I, I am in my I love myself era. <laughs> and you guys just have to suffer it now. I'm so it's a good era. in love with myself. <laughs> I love this model so much. So yeah, they're in love with themselves. It's all—it's always a good thing. It's never a bad thing. So of course, thank you so much for being a part of the VTuber Showcase. Thank you so much for allowing me to showcase you on my channel and to show you to everyone who's out there watching my stuff and hopefully get you to a point where maybe more people start watching you, take a look at you, just kind of watch and see what it is and maybe they'll join. Who knows? But I just want to give you that opportunity. So thank you again for allowing me to do that. Thank you so much for watching. That is all the news that we have for today. Please let me know down below if you want to know any more news or if you have any comments regarding anything that you saw here, which I will try my best to respond to. I love seeing your comments down below. Of course, as well, like and subscribe to the channel. Uh, that will give you more uh, information every single day. I do two videos a day, so hopefully you enjoy.